Yeah. Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. My name's John Williams. I was uh, active in this club for about five years, I think, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, but moved away. I moved over to Gray, and Kingsport now is closer, so I call Kingsport my home club, but I love to come here and come often, and tonight I brought a friend with me from uh, the Kingsport Club, so you've all been inundated, I guess. I'm going to ask Phil if he'll come up and help me out just a little bit. I have something for you. You may remember back in the school days that every once in a while the, the teacher or the instructor would uh, give you a pop quiz. And it was a pre-instruction pop quiz just to see how much you knew before that instructor started talking about it. So Phil, if you would, hand out the pop quiz. <laughs> and I uh, give it to, like, two people can work together to do the quiz. Uh, there's not enough for everyone, so pass it out to every other one. But make sure Tom gets his own. I want Tom to have one, and I want to personally grade his. <laughs> because Tom is one that got me into this, uh, this routine also. Uh, matter of fact, both times, uh, somehow I got suckered the second time. I guess that's my fault. This time with Summits on the Air, a little program worked out pretty nicely and Tom picked me to do this one so uh, tonight we're going to talk about the NDIS antenna and uh, that's what this little uh, pop quiz is about uh, we'll take about uh, three minutes and uh, uh, go ahead and fill it out and then we'll see uh, at the end of the, uh, the instruction whether uh, any of it took or not Okay, Phil, you can give them out. All right, anybody? Oh, that was blank. And if anyone wants their own personal one, there's one here. Actually, okay. So just take a second and uh, check them out. Uh, Tom came to our club and uh, he gave a presentation there at the Kingsport Club about Yagi antennas. And he brought two antennas with him, and he, he gave a very fine class, but he talked to him, talk about having his props with him. And tonight I brought my prop also. I brought an NVIS antenna, but uh, I'll pass it around. This is the short version. There's 64 feet of it left at home. <laughs> 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 so uh, that makes a real fine antenna. And I said it was 64 feet left at home, so that should give you an idea of what we're talking about here. Uh, as we talk about uh, NVIS antennas, we're really talking about a dipole. A dipole antenna, and if you think about 65 feet of antenna, then we're talking about a 40 meter antenna, right? So, uh, by this time you should be about done with the pop quiz, right? Everyone done with it? We'll wait for you to give us the answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk about the answers a little bit. Um, NVIS stands for Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And we're talking about a sky wave that's a little different than comes off of most antennas. Most of the antennas, whether they're Yagi antennas or they're dipoles, we try our best to get the lobes to go out low on the horizon. We try to get a low lobe, signal lobe to go out so that they'll go some distance. Well, with the NVIS antenna, we're looking for something a bit different. I remember when I was a new ham, my Elmer was talking to me and uh, he was talking about getting distance, DX type communications. And whenever I finally got to Canary Islands, my very first <coughs> DX, I was so proud of myself, jumping up and down and told my Elmer about it. He congratulated me for being a real ham. 
And I felt that way quite a bit while I was exploring DX, a lot of fun. But I also went to the special event stations we see published in the magazine, and I couldn't get a whole bunch of those. I couldn't get those in West Virginia or Virginia or North Carolina or South Carolina. Even some of them may be in Georgia. I couldn't get it all. And I was wondering why. And as I studied and tried to figure out what was going on, I got involved in summits on the air. And we have a lot of people who were doing summits in North Carolina and Tennessee, West Virginia and Virginia, and I couldn't hear them. HF-wise, they were out transmitting and I couldn't hear them. And as I was trying to figure out what the problem was, I learned about NVIS antennas. NVIS antennas purpose is to be able to talk within 40 to 400 miles. 40 to 400 miles. If you think about it, most of your antennas, your dipole antennas or your Yagi antennas, <coughs> you don't talk in that range. And here where we're located, we don't have much of a ground wave. <laughs> Our ground wave is as good as anybody else's but until it hits the first mountain or the first hill, and then it dies. So uh, if, if we were in Kansas, we could have maybe a 40 or 50 mile ground wave, but here in East Tennessee, it doesn't happen that way. I can't even get Bristol, uh, HF-wise. So uh, I'm sure some of you experienced that also. So the NVIS antenna, I learned, allowed us to have communications in the 40 to the 400 range. It also overcomes mountains or obstacles or hills. Uh, you can have communications with one station behind the mountain and another station deep in the valley and they can communicate with each other. The reason is, is the lobes that I was talking about a while ago are now going straight up. On our NVIS antenna, the lobes are going straight up. Matter of fact, they're going up at a at an angle of about 75 to 90 degrees. <coughs> if it was 90 degrees, it'd be straight up. 75, it'd be like this. So you figure in that range there, the signal's going straight up, hitting the, the, the F layer, is ions, it refracts, and refracts back to the earth. And it fills in that area 40 miles to 400 miles. Once I discovered that and found out how to do it, I had a lot of fun. I could hit stations at Linville Falls in North Carolina and and uh, into West Virginia. A, a lot of stations there that never could hear before. Uh, Athens, Tennessee. Has anyone gotten Athens, Tennessee? No, but you can with the NVIS antenna. Or how about Jenkins, Kentucky? Anyone getting Jenkins, Kentucky in their HF? No, but we can with NVIS. Now, I said it's nothing more than a di dipole antenna, but it's a dipole antenna that's been brought down low to the ground. When we put up a dipole antenna, most of the time you're putting it up in excess of 30 feet, 45 feet, 48 feet. You're getting it up in the air. But if you're going to do an NVIS, you want to bring it down low to the ground. Bring it down to 10 feet off the ground. 10 feet. That sounds crazy, but 10 feet off the ground, and you'll be surprised at how well you can communicate. The noise level also comes way down. The closer you get it to the ground, the less noise you have in, in general. So you get it out of the air, bring it down close to the ground, you're able to talk 40 to 400 miles. You lose a whole bunch of the noise that you hear whenever the antenna is higher. And now you can overcome obstacles because you're actually hopping over them. Because your antenna or your signal is going straight up and refracting straight back down. So even though someone's in the valley, you can talk to them. That was really eye-opening when we were doing something that we called QRP in the park. 
at, uh, at the <coughs> King's Club, Club, we've been doing QRP in the park, learning how to use the QRP radios. And generally speaking, QRP radios, we're not trying to talk to the Canary Islands, okay? We're, we're really trying to talk to someone that's just a, a, a short skip and a hop away. Now, yeah, I can get California sometimes, and I can get Arizona sometimes. That's not reliable. It just happens that way. But with the QRP radio only putting out five watts and the NVIS antennas, I am able to get a lot of stations that are pretty close, close in, two, three hundred miles away. So it's pretty interesting. Now, I'm going to pass this around. This around. This is a. Uh, from uh, West Mountain Radio, it was on the internet. You might uh, see there, it tells you what length you should make your antenna depending upon the frequency. It's a dipole, so some of you got that in your head, four, six, eight divided by the frequency already in your head. But if you don't want to remember, <coughs> there's a, a little uh, website that has that information available. One of the things that you can do to even improve the NVIS antenna, <coughs> we already put it out as a dipole, bring it down 10 feet, but you can improve it even more. We learned part of that from Tom, when Tom brought his Yankee antennas over. We look at the, the driven element, the director element, and the reflector element, right Tom? Well. <coughs> With this NVIS antenna, if we run a ground wire underneath the antenna, it's only 10 feet tall now, but if we run a wire completely underneath it as a reflector, it even improves it that much more. What's the formula for reflectors and directors? It's 5% of whatever the driving element is. So a reflector would be 105 times whatever the length of the driver is, and you've got the length right there. Uh, depending upon the frequency, then the, you put a wire underneath the antenna and you get much better signal. So it's, a, it's, it's an improvement. First time I did this, <coughs> I uh, put up just 65 feet, thought that would be about right, and I found out that I had a, like a 1.7 signal ratio, 1 to 1.7. <coughs> SWR. I started cutting back on my on my antenna and I got it to 1.1. I put this I put the uh, reflector under it and it was the same 1.1 1, .1, 1 to 1.1. 1 .1. Pretty decent uh, <laughs> pretty decent for any antenna. The second time I did it I did it at a friend's house Tom Price. Uh, KI4 CVU, did it at his house, and it came out, I, I didn't change anything, it came out to a signal ratio of 1 to 1 1.7, which kind of seemed kind of odd. Later, about three weeks later, we went to the fire department and we did a special event station for Fire Prevention Week, and it set it out again, and it was 1 to 1 1.7. So I don't know why it did that other than to say the ground is different. Yeah. Whatever is around there. Reflectors uh, can be reflecting the signal. We happen to be up against a brick building at the fire station, fire station number two in uh, Kingsport. So we had a 1.7. But when I first did it in a backyard, in a friend's backyard, it came out to 1 to 1.1. 1 .1. So. All I can say is that you may have to adjust the length a little bit if you're going to have your antenna there for, you know, for a period of time. I was just doing it for experiment, so, you know, it was okay to operate at 1.1 1. 1 to 1. 1.7, and it operated mighty fine. The very first time I did it, I got 30 contacts just right off the bat. So it's a neat antenna, and uh, I would encourage everyone to give it a try. If you want to try to get some of those stations that are closer in, they're, they're not uh, they're not DX, but there are a lot of stations you can still have a lot of fun with, and ones that you maybe haven't gotten before. So uh, on the pop quiz, 
each question is worth 10 points. And you notice that if you get all of them right, you would have at least 100 points, but there's 11 questions there, so we're gonna throw one of them out. So you only have to answer right 10 questions to get 100 points. So uh, I won't call on you now. This fellow right here, first guy here in the blue shirt, I'm sorry I don't know everyone's name. What does NVIS stand for? A near vertical incident, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, antenna. <laughs> Skyways. <laughs> oh, Skyways. Oh, that's good enough. All right. Okay, what frequencies work best? Uh, we didn't talk about frequencies too much, but what frequencies do work best? Remember, we're trying to refract the signal off of the F1, F2 layer. So, uh, what frequencies would work best? What, what uh, bands? 20, 40, 80, depending on time and day. 80 and 40 is basically it. Now, um, 40 is not too hard to handle. You put up an antenna in 65 feet, 67 feet, 70 feet, something like that. That's not too hard to handle, but if you're starting to do an 80 meter antenna, it's getting a little unwieldy, okay? I mean, it's just, it's just hard to handle. So, uh, but 80 and 40 is, uh, is the bands that we try to get on. What's the physical range, the distance we're trying to get? 40 to 400. 40 to 400. <clears throat> what antenna type is the foundation for the NVIS? Dipole. The dipole. How directional is the NVIS? Probably not much. Direction. It's not very directional, is it? The signal's going straight up. You're not putting any lobes out. The signal's going straight up and refracting off of the sky, off of the F2 layer. So, uh, or F1 and F2 layer. So, you don't have directivity. It's an omnidirectional antenna. Uh, what is the formula for determining the length of a dipole antenna? We already talked about that, 468 divided by the frequency, right? Give you, it gives you the length in feet. Why add a grounding wire to the NVIS antenna? Who said it? Reduce noise. Reduce noise and it, re it reflects the signal. You get a, a stronger signal up, okay? Is that wire just it's not connected to the antenna? It's not connected to the antenna and it has been proven to work both ways. You can put metal stakes in the ground and and use it as a ground, as an earth ground, or you can leave it unconnected to the earth and it still reflects, reflects. So I don't know which is the best way to go. It's experimentation is what we're supposed to be doing as hands. So uh, give it a try. I don't think it make any difference, John, because it's the same. Still reflects. Yeah, it's the same as the Yagi. Except it's pointing up. And the right. Yagi, the reflector can be either ground or ground. Okay. That's from the voice of experience. I'm I'm still just a puppy learning. <coughs> it's just my opinion. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what is the proper height of a deployed NVIS antenna? Ten to fifteen feet. 10 to 15 feet seems to work ex exceedingly well. You don't have to, you know, say it's one eighth or one fourth of a wavelength or anything like that. Just set it at 10 feet and go with it. And it works really well, or it has for me. What three advantages does the NVIS antenna uh, give us? Phil? Less noise. Less noise? What else? Cold trained. Hmm? Close range. Close range, 4,400 miles, and overcomes obstacles, mountains and valleys, okay? And you don't need a big old tower. Do what? Don't need a big tower. Don't need a tower, that's don't right. Need a <coughs> How effective is the NVIS antenna communication with stations using directional antennas? I didn't say anything about that, but let's say you're trying to communicate with the station with a directional antenna. 
Do we have a problem? Yeah. Probably. Probably have a problem. <clears throat> this antenna works best if there's a like image on the other end. So it works terrific for if you're having like emergency communications and both sites are running this type of antenna, you got some distance between you or you got an obstacle between you, this would work terrific. But if you got a Yagi antenna pointed at, up or pointed away from you or even pointed at you, you may not communicate with this antenna, with the NVIS antenna. So these stations that are doing summits on the air are running five watts. If they would put this as a NVIS and then we who were chasing them down here in the cities did an NVIS, we'd get them just like that, I'm sure. Right now it's just iffy if we can get them. Okay, there's the one question everyone wanted to throw out, right? The last one. The last one? <laughs> it don't pertain. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I figured that the question we wanted to throw out uh, was what is the bowl over point for the NVIS yeah. antenna? Weren't you ever bowl one over? Yeah, once, only once, only <laughs> one time. There is no bowl over point, it's just to see if anyone's paying attention. <laughs> That's it, guys. Appreciate it.